Hello and welcome to this first uh, first problem in module 12 looking at testing for the equality across multiple population proportions. So this uh, we've done something similar to this. Uh, in module 10 we looked at a situation where we wanted to test the equality across two population proportions. And this was um, perhaps at this point a relatively straightforward uh, two sample Z test. Uh, so the calculations were a little bit uh, more straightforward than what we're going to be getting into here. Now if we want to test uh, for the equality across multiple population proportions, now this is going to be a chi-squared test uh, rather than a Z test. Now the alternative hypotheses uh, it's not necessarily going to be that all of them are not equal. There's a very common mistake that I see when we have multiple populations is that students will say, you know, something like this. That's, that's a possible outcome, that they're all unique and they're all different, but that's not necessarily what we're testing for. What we're testing for here is simply that at least one of them is different. So we say in the alternative, just not all are equal. Uh, it's possible that all of them are different, all of them are unique, but all we're testing for is really that at least one of those population proportions is different from the rest. Uh, so if we, we do the test and we find that we have evidence to reject the null hypotheses, well then we have this procedure, I always, I don't know how to pronounce the name properly, Marasquillo procedure uh, to identify which of those proportions is different. So we have a, another set of procedure, I'll probably have to do a second video for that one, uh, uh, to, to identify where a difference exists. So for this exercise, uh, here we're looking at a research project, we decide to we want to determine whether pet owners are satisfied with their choice of pets. So we do a survey, we gather some data, we ask, we ask uh, our classmates uh, our pet owners, what kind of pet do you have, dog or cat or something else, and if you were likely to adopt the same animal when yours dies. So when your dog dies, are you going to adopt another dog, or are you going to maybe adopt uh, something else, a different species of animal? So we have here uh, two possible responses. We have yes or we have no, and we have three uh, possible pet categories, so cat, dog, or other. So this is going to be a test on three population proportions. So P1 equals P2 equals P3, and again, not all of these are equal. So there's part A done. We've got our null and alternative hypotheses uh, formulated. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do, and this is um, this is where these calculations can get a little bit tedious. We need to calculate our test statistic. Well, first, we still always have to specify our level of significance with any hypothesis test. To calculate this chi-square statistic, well, here it says compute the expected frequencies, and that's why I've got this blank table down here. This test statistic looks a little bit tedious, a little bit cumbersome, uh, and what it is usual notation is fij eij squared divided by eij. So these are our frequencies. fij, those are our observed frequencies. And i and j, so here's the summation. i is, in this case, our number of rows. So i is uh, yes or no. And j, j is going to be here our number of populations. So we have three different populations. So FIJ, that's referring to each of these individual cells. So here I have six observed frequencies. What EIJ is, that's what we're going to calculate down here. Oops, EIJ are the expected frequencies. So what does that mean? Well, again, like all of the tests that we've done, we always have this underlying assumption that the null hypothesis is true, unless we have evidence to show otherwise. So, if that's the case, and if the null hypothesis is true, what would we expect those frequencies to be? So this is what we need to calculate here in this lower table. Now, in order to calculate that, your textbook formulas would usually show something like this. So it's um, Maybe the row i total 
oops, times the column uh, j total divided by uh, divided by the total total number of observations. So total number of observations. So what this means, if I were to let's uh, let's work towards um, this first cell here. So what this formula means, if I'm looking for the expected frequency for the number of cat owners who are likely to adopt. So this is that corresponding observed frequency. What's the expected frequency? Well, what we do, what this formula is saying is take this, multiply it by this, and divide it by this. And that's probably straightforward enough to do, but why? Why? Why does that work? Well, let's just uh, let's quickly go over that. If the null hypothesis is true, and we expect all of the proportions to be equal. Well, what is our best point estimate of that common population proportion? Well, if we look at, here's the number of people, the total number of people um, that said yes, they are likely to readopt. So 110 out of 248. So if I calculate 110 out of 248, let me just grab my little calculator here. So 110 divided by 248. So that's 0.44, let's say 444. 0.444, is that right? Why do I feel like that's not the right answer? 100, oops, 110 divided by 248. Ah, okay, for some reason I was expecting something else. So, if the null hypothesis is true, if all of these proportions are the same, in other words, there's no difference between the number of cat owners who would readopt a cat, dog owners who would readopt an other, uh, then our best point estimate of that common proportion, because it doesn't matter what kind of animal you own, if they're all the same, it's irrelevant. So this is the common, our best point estimate, 44.4, um, let's call it a percent, 44.4 percent of pet owners are likely to readopt. So we have surveyed 90 cat owners. So what that means is that our expected frequency for the cat owners, if all the proportions are the same, then we would expect that 0.444 times 90, that should be our expected number of people that we surveyed, of the 90 people that we surveyed, that's the expected number of cat owners that would readopt a cat. So if we say this times 90, so 39.9. So there's our expected frequency. Uh, given that we talked to 90 people, our point estimate is 0.444 of that common population proportion. So our expected frequency is that we would expect 39.9 people to have adopted a cat. So as you can see, having done that calculation kind of in pieces, what we have done, we have 110 divided by 248, and then we multiplied it by 100. So that's the same as the row total times the column total divided by uh, the total number of observations. So that's getting a little bit hard to see. So as you can see, that's how it works. And so now we can just crunch through all of these calculations um, and it'll go a little faster. In fact, I'm gonna cheat and save a little bit of time. I've got the answers on an Excel spreadsheet right here in front of me so I don't have to punch. Can I always make silly mistakes using that, that awful on-screen calculator? So I'm just gonna fill in our blanks here. I've done all of these calculations. So this is gonna be 40.8. This is going to be 29.3. And there might be some rounding errors here. I'm rounding it to one decimal place. But our totals had absolutely better add up. Otherwise, there's a problem somewhere. So all of our totals should add up to be the same. Uh, i got to scroll down a little bit because the pen acts funny when I get below this, uh, close to the bottom of the screen. This is 50.1, 51.2, 36.2. And don't really need the rest, but we'll fill it in for good measure. 248. Okay, so there's our table of expected frequencies. So that's all we need uh, there for part B. So again, if 
there is no difference across these three populations. Our best point estimate of that common population proportion of people who would readopt the same species of animal uh, is 110 divided by 248. Using that common proportion and the number of people, the number of observations that we have, we've calculated what do we expect those proportions to be if the null hypothesis is true. Okay, so the next step is to go ahead and calculate this somewhat cumbersome uh, calculation. So, how am I going to do this? I'm actually going to, let's see, I don't need this formula anymore. I'm going to erase this one. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to calculate all of these differences squared. So, here I'm going to have all of these differences, Fij minus Eij squared. And then we can just add all of those up, and that will give us, uh, oops, no, actually, we have to divide it also by the expected value. And then, so I'll have six of those, and then we'll add all of those up. Um, and that will give us our test statistic. I'm going to run out of room a little bit. There we go. Okay, so these differences, the observed frequency, so I'll do this slowly for the first couple and then I'll just fill in the rest. So this first one is going to be the observed frequency is 34 minus, this one's already highlighted, so 34 minus 39.9. And then we square that and we divide it by 39.9. So I'll get my calculator out. So this is going to be 34, oops, 34 minus 39.9, and we square that, and we divide it by the expected value, 39.9. So that gives us 0 .87, it's 0 .872. So that's going to be here, the first one is 0.872. Now we do the next one. So the next one will be, oops. Oh, the silly eraser, sometimes it just doesn't work. There we go. So the next one we'll do, we'll stick with the yeses. We have to do this for all six of these values. And so that's why I'm gonna skip through most of them. So the next one again, get that calculator. So this is gonna be the difference, 52 minus 40.8 and we square that and we divide that by the expected value so that's the 40.8 oops 0.8 and so that's 3. Uh, 3.07 oops <coughs> she I'm having a hard time with my pens today 3.07 okay so that's Hopefully that's enough to get you to the, and see the process. So I'm just going to fill in, uh, fill in all the rest. So 3.07. The next one is going to be uh, 0 0.951. And then if we go ahead through the nose, I'll have 0 0.6. Uh, we're going to round to about 0.7. I'll have a 2.44. And the last one will be a point. 757 and then once we add all of those up let's uh, do that on screen so 0 0.872 plus 3.07 plus 0.951 plus 0.7 plus 2.44 plus finally 0.7 Five, seven. So that gives me then, uh, finally, our test statistic of 0 0.8, let's just call it 0 0.88, or sorry, 8.8, 8.8. So there's our chi-squared test statistic. So it's a little bit cumbersome. I know I cheated, uh, but you can pause the video and, and work through it uh, on your own. So that's our test statistic. So now uh, the rest of it is similar to any other test that we've done. Now we have to look up a critical value or find a p-value uh, and, and draw our conclusion, which here that's going to be our next step, part C. So if we go to our chi-squared table, so here, like 
is very common for so many other types of problems that we've done. Degrees of freedom in this case, we have k minus 1 uh, degrees of freedom, uh, and we'll look for whatever is our alpha, I think was 0 0.05. So k is our number of, of populations that we're working with. So here we're going to look for the chi-squared, 0.5 and uh, 3 minus 1, so 2 degrees of freedom, because we have here, uh, if we go back to our test, we have three different, oh, oh my gosh, we have three different populations that we're working with. So. Gee, I don't know what happened there. Everything got moved around. Okay, so if we go back to our chi-square, now we're looking at two degrees of freedom, and alpha is 0.05, so our chi-squared, our critical value, is 5.99. So let's come back here. Oh my goodness, I'm getting in a fight with this machine today. Okay, our chi-squared critical, is 5.99 so even though this is a test on equality which at this point students are becoming programmed into thinking well that's a two-tailed test so we have to divide alpha by two uh, to get the critical value well it's a two-tailed it's a it's a test for equality yes however this approach that we're using is in fact an upper tail chi-squared test so our our rejection rule is that if our test statistic is greater than or equal to that critical value, we reject. The p-value rejection rule, of course, that's the same. If our p-value is less than or equal to alpha, uh, then we reject. So in our case, we have a test statistic that is 8.8, .8, which is greater than 5.99. So we do have sufficient evidence to reject if we wanted to find an approximate p-value. Well, here we can see that our test statistic 8.8 .8 is somewhere in here. So our p-value is something between 0.025 and 0.01. So we have uh, p-value is something less than 0.025 and greater than 0.01, so that's consistent, thankfully. We should always get consistent conclusions. So here we have sufficient evidence to reject uh, our null hypothesis. So we do have evidence to show that there is a difference in the likelihood to readopt uh, the same pet um, after it's gone, uh, between at least these three categories, cat, dog, and other. So that's good, we've got C done, we've got D done, and these ones, something moved. So, well, I'm going to, uh, where's my time here? Yeah, 20, 18 minutes. So I'm going to do another video, probably, a, a, hopefully a quick video, uh, to do the Marasquilio procedure to identify now where is that difference. We've identified that a difference exists. So now let's, um, let's find out where that difference is. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll do uh, a couple more anyways, uh, just uh, for practice. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll get to uh, part E very soon. Bye-bye.